everyone. Um, welcome to the fourth session in the Octra's uh, Future Office series. Um, I'm Dee Dee, I'm Sustainability Manager at Octra, and today I'm joined here with, by Gemma, who is one of our senior designers at Octra. Um, this session will be all about sustainability and how to design a sustainable office that is fit for the future. Um, yeah, so what we'll be discussing is um, what makes a sustainable workspace, why it is important to incorporate sustainability um, into your office design, how can you create a more sustainable office, um, and then we'll go into what we think the future of the sustainability in the built environment will be. Um, and we thought first it's a good um, moment to sort of step back and think why are we talking about sustainability right now? Um, and I think the main reason, of course, is that we're still in a climate emergency. I know that because of the pandemic, sustainability and the climate emergency have, has maybe, you know, taken a step back. It's not as fresh into our memories anymore. Um, but, you know, it is still happening in the background. So it's really something that we keep, you know, we keep have to focus on it. Um, and it will become more and more important again in the next following years. Um, I think the pandemic has really sort of shown us what a global emergency looks like, what a global crisis looks like. Um, and since we still have time to you know, prevent the climate crisis from basically spiraling out of control, um, you know, it's, it's really time to act now. So we thought we'd do this session, get it fresh in everyone's mind. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And as much as the pandemic's been a negative, um, it's important to point out the, the positivity that's come out of lockdown in terms of sustainability. It's actually really encouraged people to develop sustainable habits, whether consciously or not, people are walking more, cycling more, going on holiday locally and supporting more local businesses. So there are some real positives that have come out of the pandemic also. Um, equally, um, the government tends to use um, the sustainability um, angle to kickstart the economy, which is obviously something that is also very topical currently. Mm, definitely, because of course we've just seen the Green Homes grant and it's been introduced, etc. So, you know, hopefully in the future there will be more of those kind of initiatives. Um, so let's sort of get on to our first topic, which is what makes a worksite workplace sustainable. Um, and I always think if you look at, if you want to see how sustainable anything is, the best thing to do that is by looking at the carbon footprint of that product or service or whatever. So similarly for a um, building or for an office space, the carbon footprint is sort of made up of operational services like lighting, heating, cooling, ventilation, um, and the embodied carbon that is in the materials. So embodied carbon is any carbon that is emitted before the product or um, material is you know, included in the building. Um, as you may know, the embodied carbon of a lot of construction materials is very high, like concrete and, and steel metals. Um, so yeah, those two together sort of make up the carbon footprint of a building. But of course, people's behavior is also really important. Absolutely. Um, and the challenge we have when designing any workspace is the fact that you're designing for a wide range of people with a wide range of views, some who will be very environmentally con conscious and some who may not be. Um, so it's about um, implementing um, small things that make being sustainable more intuitive um, and, and kind of really busy life. So making it really easy to, to take those positive steps steps towards sustainability is really important. Equally, we talk a lot about flexibility in offices, whether regard to sustainability or not, but it's becoming even more prevalent um, on the basis that the, the past year has been a really good example of how things and businesses um, have had to evolve very quickly. Um, so building in flexibility into designs allows things to change, the place to be um, reshaped without disposing of items. Um, and that's kind of really important for how to, to kind of go forward sustainably. Mm, definitely. Yeah, because, you know, you can always think about, like, you can design a super... Um, sustainable offers with super efficient systems etc but if people don't know how to use them or you know it, it just doesn't work for them they're not you know it's not going to be a sustainably operated office absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. um go on to our next um our next topic which is why is it important to incorporate sustainability into our office design 
Um, we have, so on the slide, we have a few of the reasons, um, but the main one, of course, why it's important to incorporate sustainability is again, that cli climate crisis that um, is happening. Um, if we don't look, <laughs> if we don't take that into consideration, you know, we're, we're going to go to a point of no return. And while we still have the opportunity to change things, we should. But of course, from a business point of view, there are also other reasons why um, you should incorporate sustainability into your office design, etc. And one of them is being prepared for the future. Um, we know that there's leg legislation in place at the moment that um, you know the UK has to be carbon neutral by 2050, which is already in 30 years, which sounds far away, but actually uh, <laughs> is not a very long time. So by incorporating and thinking about sustainability now, you're sort of um, setting yourself up to win, basically, because any legislation that will come in um, you know, you'll be prepared for it. You've already done a little bit of work and you don't have to do a lot of work when that legislation does come in. Secondly, from a marketing and PR point of view, um, we know that consumers are more and more interested in buying products and services of companies that do think more about sustainability and are more sustainability or environmentally aware. Um, so attracting those customers um, you know, through sustainability is, you know, a really good marketing tool, I guess. Absolutely. And and absolutely not only about attracting customers, we've talked a long time um, now in terms of workplace and businesses about attracting and retaining talent. And we started off talking about that, about the culture of a business and how it treats its people. But equally now that's expanding into how it treats the environment also. So particularly younger generations that are coming through now into the workplace, not only are they looking for um, a great place to work where they are treated really well, um, they're also looking at the carbon footprint of the, 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 um, of the business on the environment um, and, how, and, and how we and how that impacts. So for example, um, we're seeing it a lot with product um, in terms of people are looking for products that are more environmentally friendly and have less of a carbon footprint. And that's now extend, extending into brands and interiors in the same way. Mm, definitely. And then also I feel like creating a sustainable um, workplace often also means that you're creating a space that is actually healthier um, for people, where people are more productive, where people can really thrive. There's a lot of sustainability measures that sort of overlap onto that well-being plane as well. Mm, absolutely. Um, we talk a lot about, so from a well-being point of view, we talk a lot about um, the kind of types of um, chemicals that are being put into products and into the space. Um, but less chemicals, chemicals are obviously harmful to us, but they're also harmful to the environment. So there are certain elements that go hand in hand and, mm. and you kind of tick one box and equally tick another box. Mm, the same definitely. Time. Same with even like designing for ultimate daylight, for instance, which of course uses less energy, but is also good for you know you as a person, which makes you more productive. Um, so now we kind of know what makes up a sustainable workplace, why we should incorporate it. Let's look at how we can actually create a more sustainable workplace. Um, and I often think that people are maybe a little bit scared of creating a sustainable workplace because often it is sort of associated with much higher cost additionally you know on top of the cost already to um, create a new workplace whereas actually we think that there's quite a lot of things that you can do that do not have to cost more at all um, we've talked about you know embodied carbon and trying to get that embodied carbon down and really easy ways to reduce embodied carbon of a building or of a construction project is to reuse um, so reusing any structures that are already there, like partitioning, but also reusing anything that you already have in your current office. So furniture or any, yeah, you know, and the modular... materials of a building, mm -hmm. um, using that as your, your base canvas, not trying to change yeah. that, but working with it is really important. Definitely. And I think those are obviously cost effective options. So, you know, it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's right. Uh, when we talk sustainability, for a long time, we talked about Brian, Scar, Lead, and they are all quite, I think, intimidating. They're, they're huge steps that can have um, uh, quite large cost implications. But actually, as Dee says, when you break those down into mm -hmm. sort of smaller steps, there are lots of things you can do that um, 
that, that, that really start to um, make a difference. Yeah, right? make yeah. a difference and help you on your way to achieve mm. that goal, um, which we, we, it just kind of breaks it down a little bit. Mm. Which I think Definitely. Um, I think we have some pictures of some projects that we've done previously. So this is Gymshark. Yeah, so um, Gymshark um, is a really good example of what um, Dee Dee was talking about earlier in terms of um, innovative mechanical and electrical systems. So you can he see here the um, lighting system at Gymshark. So firstly, this runs off an Ethernet um, cable, uh, which means the um, the, draw, the power consumption is, is, is reduced. Um, it's also um, a circadian lighting system. So when we talk about well-being, this is obviously a really positive thing from a well-being point of view, but it actually aids sustainability as well. So when there's lots of daylight coming into the, the building, each one of those lights actually has a sensor that means that the light levels within the building will be reduced to balance the, the natural light. So obviously then, reducing the amount of power that's required. So it's not just at a constant level, it adapts around the building to the natural light and to the usage within the space, which is obviously a really, pos really positive thing in terms mm. of reducing the amount of power, power consumption. Um, another, another sort of aspect of, of what we're seeing from the sustainability um, opportunities that are around is this more um, innovative approach to materials, which has been really um, positive and really exciting from a design point of view as well. So I use Adidas as the example. So there are a couple of things in this image which are, uh, are really sort of um, tick the box in terms of innovation. So if you um, look at the, the T-point area, you can see the white cladding to the bar area. This is actually um, a recycled plastic cladding so it's made of lots of yogurt parts melted down um, and it creates this really wonderful material uh, which is like sort of a mottle of white plastic and it's even got flecks of the the foil lids of the yogurt in so it's got this slight terrazzo feel about it um, but it's great because it's really innovative it's really different and it really aligns with some of the thought process behind how Adidas are developing their products as well um, in the foreground of the image, you can see the uh, black plastic chair and the um, timber veneer chair. So the black ch plastic chair is the Mater Ocean chair, which is made out of fishing nets and ropes um, out of the sea. So really topical again, like the sheer quantity of plastic that's being dumped into our oceans. So that helps to, um, um, to resolve some of those issues. Um, equally, the Nova chair, um, when through the veneer process, there are lots of offcut of veneer that get wasted. So they've used all those offcuts of veneer and painted, painted, painted <laughs> a process um, to, to bond those together to create a new product with a really great, unique texture. Um, so, so really looking at different ways um, and nice. Sort of stories mm. within the space that can be created through say sustainability, which I think is really nice. Definitely, and I also think that is another way to sort of communicate with your staff as well. Because if you have a cool story about you know a chair that you know it just brings up conversation about Absolutely. sustainability um, with staff and clients. Um, the last picture that we want to show you is a project called New Day, which was completed a little while ago. Um, and the main reason for showing this is because this is a project that actually achieved a BRAM excellent rating, which is, of course, almost the highest BRAM rating um, that you can achieve. Um, and I think it's just really interesting to show that you might have a certain image in your head when you think of a super sustainable building or a super sustainable workplace. And all these three images, I think, really show you that a sustainable office can really look like anything. It can be a really slick, modern office. It can be any style. Yeah, um, industrial looking. Exactly. Anything, yeah. It doesn't have to be, you know, what you maybe think of when you think of a sustainable office. It can look literally like anything. Like this office, for instance, that got that really high brim rating. Um, yeah, so it just shows you that everything is possible, really. Um, so now our sort of last small topic is what is the future of sustainability in the built environment? So for me personally, I really think that that embodied carbon is going to become a massive thing for us in our industry. 
Um, as buildings are becoming more energy efficient, that sort of operational carbon of a building will go down, which means that embodied carbon of a building will become a much larger portion within the whole life cycle um, of a building. So really it is for us as an industry to um, understand more about embodied carbon and what we can do to select materials that have low embodied carbon. I know Gemma recently found some uh, products that are not even carbon neutral, but go even further than that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. We're definitely starting to see a movement. Uh, we've talked about carbon neutral for quite some time now, um, and we're definitely now starting to see a movement towards carbon negative or positive, depending on which way you turn it. <laughs> Ultimately, what it means is um, it's a product that absorbs more carbon than it, than it emits, yeah. um, uh, which is obviously, and that can be done through a number of ways. It might be through the manufacturing process. It might be through offsetting that carbon. Um, but there are lots of um, uh, uh, sort of really innovative products out there. So, so from a design point of view, it really is quite exciting to see what's what's mm. coming through, which is which is obviously all good. <laughs> Definitely. Um, that was sort of all the information that we wanted to tell you. Um, we know that there are some questions that have been submitted throughout this chat, so let's have a look at what the first question is. First question, how can a business improve sustainability in a cost-effective way? Um, I mean, I would say that we've sort of highlighted um, various options that um, don't have to be expensive, as we mentioned about, you know, um, reusing what's there, using the existing building, creating spaces that are multi-purpose, so you have one space that is used for various things rather than having, you know, individual spaces that are used for only one thing. It's that sort of things, I think, that are cost-effective and sustainable. Absolutely. And I think, like we said, break it down into small mm -hmm. steps. You know, you don't have to kind of start here. Break it down into small steps. At, at the very basic start, um, do you have recycle bins already? Mm -hmm. If not, you know, it's a really cost effective way of not only starting to recycle, but making your teams aware that this mm -hmm. is something that's on your agenda now and getting them involved as well in what they might like to see around the, the office space. Yeah. Um, let's see if there's another question. If businesses could implement one thing to help with sustainability, what would that be? Um, what would that be? I mean, I would say that again, like engaging your team. I think um, if you don't really know where to start yet, I think one easy thing that you can start with, definitely even now you can do that remotely, is uh, do like a questionnaire or some sort of interactive sessions with your staff, with the company, um, to see what is important to people. Because I can imagine that within different um, industries, you know, different things will be important for those specific industries. So really looking at what is important to your staff. Um, and then, you know, the thing that comes out at number one, just start there and then sort of make your way down the list. I think that would be the one thing that, that you can do. Absolutely. I think you raise a really good point in terms of different businesses, different industries will have different focuses. And I think it's about identifying what what works for you as a business and what would be the best way for you to start that start that journey. Definitely. I think we have time for one more question. Let's see what it is. What are the consequences of delaying sustainable solutions? Um, I mean, the, the obvious one, obviously, is the consequence of, of delaying or not doing anything is that we reach this point of no return, really. And, and we obviously don't want that. Um, so I think that would be the main one, as well as from, more from a business point of view, I think it would be, you know, losing out on customers, maybe like being left behind. Absolutely. Um, I think we talk about that goal of 2050. Mm -hmm. as, as we've sort of said, that, that's quite daunting if you get six months <laughs> before, <laughs> before 2050 and think of all these things you've got to implement. So I think if you start on that journey down now and break it down um, and begin to implement these things, all of a sudden 2050, which is not as far away as it sounds, mm -hmm. becomes very achievable. Um, and I think you just don't want that kind of last minute 
yeah, scramble. <laughs> that, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you can do this in a really um, considerate way to your business. Um, and the only way to do that is start planning it early and integrating it in now. Definitely. Um, I think that was all that we had time for. If you have any other questions that you'd like us to answer, you can always reach us through the email address that is um, in the screen right now. Um, and if you have any questions on you know, sustainability or what we do as Octra or any projects that we've completed, um, of course, feel free to get in touch with us. We've just recently launched a new sustainability page on our website as well that sort of highlights everything that we do so if you want you know start so if you want to start somewhere that would be a really great start um yeah get in touch with us if there's anything more that you want to know but if not we want to wish you a really good day and Absolutely. thanks for watching thank and thank we hope that you join our next session again <laughs> bye thank you